In this example, we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to figure out the total distance traveled given a particle's velocity. So this is going to be different than what we've done in class up till now. Up till now we've done displacement, but we've never found total distance. So let's start by actually graphing the velocity function. You can see that because it's, a parab it's going to be a parabola, because this is a quadratic, and we can see that it's going to open up because the coefficient here in front of the t squared is just positive 1. So let's start first by finding the t-intercepts. And we can do that by noticing that we can factor this into t minus 3 and t plus 2. So the t-intercepts are going to happen where the velocity is 0. So I'm going to have 0 equaling t minus 3 and t plus 2. So I'm going to get t being either 3 or t is negative 2. So let's sketch this. So we know we're going to intersect, we're going to have a point here at 3, 0 and also a point here at negative 2, 0. And now let's also look at where we intersect the v of t axis. That's just going to happen when time is 0. So at time is 0 implies that my velocity is equal to just negative 6. So I'm also going to have a point here. So I'm going to do a rough sketch here where we can see it's coming down roughly like this. And at time 4, I should be up here. You can see v of 4 is going to be 16 minus 4 minus 6, so that's going to be 6. So that looks just about right here on the graph. Let me adjust it a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to clear us some space, and let's look at what displacement and total distance would mean on this graph. So we're given that our time interval is between 1 and 4. So we're going to look at these areas here. So let's give them names. Let's call this area down here. I'll call it A2. And then we're going to call this area here. Let's give it a different color. About green. And this area we're going to call A1. Okay, now we know from what we've done in class that our displacement is going to be given by the definite integral of the velocity between times 1 and 4. And so we see down here where the blue area is shaded, where my velocity is negative, the particle is moving to the left in the line, and then where my velocity is positive, it's moving back to the right. And so the, the total displacement we're going to get by taking a1 and then subtracting off a2. And that's exactly what we get with the definite integral. Now, if I instead want total distance, so I want to count the distance the particle is moving to the left, and I also want to count the distance it's moving to the right, that is instead going to be given by the absolute value of my velocity. In other words, I'm going to take the definite integral of my speed. So I have absolute value of the velocity, which is just your speed. And in that case, I'm going to get a1 plus a2. So now the question is, how do I take the definite integral of the absolute value of a function? Because that's what we're most interested in here. So let's clear some space and look at that. Okay, so the absolute value of a function. Well, if the function's positive, so in this case, between 3 and 4, the absolute value is just going to be the value of the function itself. So it's just going to be v of t wherever your velocity is already positive. Okay, and then the absolute value, wherever the velocity is negative, we take the absolute value, we want the negative of the function. So I want negative velocity 
wherever my velocity is already negative. And actually, I'll make this just a less than sign because we've already taken care of the zero case above. All right, and if I do this, then my velocity will always be positive. I've taken the absolute value. And again, absolute value of velocity is actually just giving you your speed. All right, so let's look at it for this problem. So for our particular example, we're only going to look at the time interval between 1 and 4, because that's all we care about from the problem. So between 1 and 4, we can see that the velocity is going to be positive just between 3 and 4, so just this region up here. So I have 3 less than or equal to t, which is going to be less than or equal to 4. And now we know the velocity is negative between 1 and 3, so to take the absolute value, I'm going to have the negative of my velocity. I'm going to have negative t squared plus t plus 6, where t is between 1 and 3. So now I'm interested in finding the definite integral of the absolute value of my velocity. And we can see I'm actually going to break that up into two separate definite integrals. I'm going to do one integral from 1 to 3 of the negative of my velocity. So it's going to be negative t squared plus t plus 6 dt. And then I'm going to add a definite integral from 3 to 4, where my velocity is already positive. So that's just t squared minus t minus 6. That's the original velocity I started with. OK, now I'm going to evaluate both of these definite integrals. So let's clear some space. Now we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate these. So let's start here with this first definite integral. And I'm going to find the antiderivative of each of the terms. So the antiderivative of negative t squared is going to be negative t cubed over 3. The antiderivative of t is just going to be t squared over 2. And then the antiderivative of 6, I'm just going to get 6t. And I'm going to be evaluating this from 1 to 3. We're going to do the same so now if we evaluate these, this first one I'm going to evaluate the top limit. So I'm going to have negative 3 cubed over 3. We can fill in the rest. And then I'm going to subtract off this antiderivative evaluated at 1. So I'm going to have negative 1 cubed over 3. But that was just coming from that first definite integral. We're going to do the same thing with the second definite integral. I'll squish it down below. It's the same idea. OK, so there's the rest of it. So from this point out, it's just a bunch of algebra, which I'll leave to you. But when you simplify all of this, you should get 61 over 6. So it's approximately 10. So if this was in meters per second, the particle would have moved approximately 10 meters during that time period. All right, that's it.